Hi everybody, first of all I would like to thank all organizers organizer for the session to have the opportunity to present my research. So now I'm going to talk about some results of my PhD entitled How Geoarchaeological and Multiscolar Approach Provides New Insight About Rapid Climate Changes and Social Dynamics Consequences onto Mediterranean Landscape During Bronze Age. So, my research takes place in Mediterranean Basin and more precisely uh, into the stream and watershed in North Aegean Greece, exactly in his lower valley, 15 kilometers upstream is the delta in Aegean Sea. Currently, as you can see, it looks like a river into a huge alluvial flat plain, totally drained and cultivated since the 30s. We have conducted um, a significant fieldwork composed of nine cores along a two kilometers transect study from the current study, uh, a current stream and channel to the west, and uh, it is the uh, last uh, tributary uh, Angitis to the east in rich uh, archaeological context. After that, the study is focusing on lab work with multi proxies approach divided in geomorphological and paleo palynological analysis in order to produce the paleo-environmental reconstruction. The transect study represented here provides information such as an incredible accumulation rate of more than 25 meters for the last seven millennia and several phases of lake stream of fluvial dynamics characterized by some channel displacements during the last centuries. In order to study the mid to late Holocene climatic change and the Bronze Age dynamics, I present now the deepest core, HC8, located close to the current stream and channel. The stratigraphy presents 25 meters Holocene deposits in which 17 consistent radiocarbon data were performed in order to produce an accurate age depth model. From a sedimentological point of view, we note an homogeneous silty lake deposit during five millennia, like for all Bronze Age periods, interrupted during the antiquity by an erosive and intensive fluvial process. Equally, at first glance, the magnetic susceptibility doesn't record major changes before the last centuries. However, in agreement with the loss on initiation, a tipping point seems to have occurred around 2200 BC. Then, pollen data can offer new information about hydrological changes and landscape evolution. So, the main results are exposed in a synthetic <coughs> pollen diagrams and that I present you now. 10 meters of deposit and 42 pollen samples allow us to per study the period from early Bronze Age to the beginning of antiquity. In the bottom part of the studied period, the first palynozone between 3200 BC and 2400 BC confirms the attendance of lake environment surrounded by forested landscape with typical tree species dominated by Quercus pinus silvestris and Austria Capinus Orientalis type. We note also a weak but continuous occurrence of coprophilus in PPs and in PPs indicative of fire events. In this region, archaeological data attest that early Bronze Age started from 3200 BC and was characterized by a population growth and agropastoral activities development, such as supported by the drug diagram. After that, such as suggested by magnetic susceptibility and loss on initiation, the pollen diagram show an interruption by rapid climate change around 2200 BC. Concretely, in the pollen diagram, we note a significant dry event attested by lake level decrease according to NPPs and deciduous forest reduction. Probably, this event, generally called 4.2 BP event, uh, marks the reinforcement of Mediterranean climatic condition towards second part of Holocene in agreement with central Mediterranean studies. 
During the following centuries, all the anthropogenic indicators increased and the landscape was open. Especially, we note the first continuous evidence of cereal farming. This change in growing practices was possible through the drying up of fertile wetland close to the lake. This pattern was relatively unmodified during 1 millennium until 1200 BC, where a sudden and temporary drop of humid MPPs and some forested taxa was recorded, corresponding with the end of late Bronze Age. Some centuries after this climatic event, around 800 BC, the pollen data show another severe drop. Almost forested taxa decrease and humid NPPs indicators drop, inferring another significant lake reduction. Nevertheless, anthropogenic impacts were more and more pregnant with pastoral activities and on the slope and farming in low long area in agreement with the beginning of antiquity period. To sum up re result from this pollen sequence, we note that regional vegetation cover marks a typical point related to the 2200 BC events at the end of early Bronze Age period. This draw event is contemporary with reinforcement of anthropogenic evidences during early Bronze Age, Middle Bronze Age transition. Nevertheless, the intensive landscape changes at this time don't affect negatively the anthropization evidences. This established an archaeological paradox with some theories because they indicate a decrease of settlement density for this period, but in case study, case study there is no social crisis inferred by this dramatic drought. On the contrary, the local population seems to benefit of this landscape change to develop their agro-pastoral practices into lowland areas. For now, come back and focus to our field study area to try to confirm and improve the knowledge about human environment relationships during this period. On to the transex study presented Previously, we have already analyzed the FC1 core located two kilometers from the previous one <coughs> and on the foot of the late Neolithic Phytocorypha settlement. The pollen data was also performed from eight radiocarbon data and 50 pollen samples from early Bronze Age to antiquity. Uh, briefly, into the closed and woodland landscape at the beginning of Bronze Age, we note an erosive and opening process around 3000 BC related to agropastoral activities and a significant dry event at 2200 BC attested by drop of lake indicators and substitution of riparian forest by mesophilus and zoothermophilus taxa. Nevertheless, in opposite to the previous pollen diagram, there is no significant change, decrease or intensification into human impacts onto vegetation cover after the 2200 BC climatic event. Furthermore, the anthropogenic pressure was already attested since two millennia in agreement to the early phytocorypha settlement during late Neolithic and archaeological data. To finish with our regional results, let's move 50 kilometers to the east into the Tenagi Philippon Basin, where an high density of Bronze Age settlements have been discovered and for some of them uh, excavated. Among them, uh, the oldest one, Tell of Dikilitash, was particularly studied. And uh, I take advantage of this opportunity to invite you uh, uh, to glance uh, at the new book written by archaeological archaeologist team uh, about the last uh, 30, 30 years of investigation. And around uh, this tale, this site, during the last six years, a significant uh, on site and off site uh, geoarchaeological approach was performed, providing you new information about tail evolution, sedimentation into the valley, 
or vegetation changes but uh, I can't present you uh, right now to keep uh, some time for, for the conclusion. In order to sum up the both archaeological and paleobiological results, I present quickly the landscape surrounding evolution thanks to illustrated block diagrams. The town of Dikilitash, settled since early Neolithic, was abandoned around 3900 BC after a fire event. Nevertheless, human disturbances on the vegetation never disappeared. It was resulted during early Bronze Age, around 3300 BC, inferring the clearance of mesophilous forests simultaneous with cultivating field expansion, and vegetation cover reflects diversified land management system as indicated by a greater diversity of cultivated or harvested plants. But what is the local impact of the 2200 BC dry event described previously from other pollen diagram? Surprisingly, there is no major change into human activities and vegetation cover recorded around this site, only a progressive substitution of forested landscape by shrubs and frigana. During the late Bronze Age to antiquity, we observe main features of land use intensification, such as improvement of water control in order to sp spread the plots, an extension of the cultivated and grazing areas, inducing growth of slope erosion process, and finally, the foundation by Macedonian people of Philippi Antique City occurred in 357 BC. To conclude, we record clearly some rapid climate changes from pollen and geomorphological data during Bronze Age, but human environment climate relationships don't have always the same periodicities onto the mosaic landscape dynamics. And there is no social environmental co collapse directly, directly resulting to the 2200 BC events in our study area. Bronze Age population uh, seems to be relatively resilient locally to these dry events. This result invites us to adopt a geographical and multiscalar approach in archaeological interpretation of climatic viability landscape dynamic and social consequences. And for now, we try to reproduce this approach in other geographical contexts, such as some Bulgarian valleys and upper trace, to improve the knowledge about the topic of human climate relationships and discontinuities during uh, Calcolithic and Bronze Age period. Thanks for your attention.